Hi everyone and welcome to NBC Weather Plus University. I am weatherplus.com meteorologist Samantha Davies. During the next half hour, our goal is to help young people gain a better understanding of their environment. That includes the weather and topics connected to the weather. It is all part of our commitment to educational and informational programming. Well, did you know that radios have been entertaining us for more than 100 years? They deliver news and music right into our homes, cars, and pretty much anywhere we go. But have you ever wondered why the radio sounds like static when a storm rolls through? Well, Weather Plus correspondent Dave Kerwin recently traveled the streets of New York City to find the answers. Radio transmission has been around for more than 100 years. Whether in the form of tabletop radios, boomboxes, headsets, or Walkmans, We've almost always assumed that with the flick of a switch, music will be flowing over the air and into our ears. But hearing those sounds isn't quite as easy as it seems. Radio waves, which are an invisible form of electromagnetic radiation moving through the electromagnetic spectrum, were first discovered in the late 19th century by German physicist Henrik Hertz. Within months, scientists around the world were working on a way to transmit these radio waves as a form of wireless communication. And after several years of unsuccessful attempts, Italian inventor Marconi found success. On December 12, 1901, with the help of a 500-foot kite-supported antenna, Marconi and his crew transmitted the first transatlantic radio communication from Cornwall, England, to Newfoundland, Canada. The sound test didn't last very long, but it provided a lifetime of change. From the early days of Morse code to the scratchy sounds of the first AM signals, and on to today's digital systems, radio sound quality has certainly come a long way. Jim Stagnito is an engineer at WNYC Public Radio in New York City, and he explains the basics of radio transmissions. Very simple, really. It's electromagnetic waves. Now, whether it's AM or whether it's FM, high frequency, low frequency, it's all basically electromagnetic waves that are generated in the radio transmitter. How we modulate it is different. So for FM, it's frequency modulation. AM, it's amplitude modulation. And what about when there's a big storm, lots of clouds about, maybe even some lightning? How does that affect the signals? Oh, well, now it all depends on what kind of signal it is. Now, if it's amplitude, which means power modulation, what winds up happening is you get a lot of static and crashing noises when you get a thunderstorm. Well, that's because lightning is in essence a lot of electricity, a lot of power, all being discharged at the same time. FM was specifically invented to try to eliminate that because instead of getting discharges, a lot of power being discharged, what it does for modulation is it varies the frequency of the electromagnetic waves. That's why you don't get static. Is there any specific sorts of weather that can decrease the signal strength traveling through the atmosphere? Absolutely, I'm glad you asked me that. How many times, if you have satellite TV, have you noticed that in a heavy snowstorm or a heavy rainstorm, suddenly the signal all goes away? Well, that is a condition that we know as rain fade or snow fade. Literally, what winds up happening is the raindrops will absorb some of the signal or it will reflect some of the signal and it will dissipate. So the amount of radio energy that actually um, hits your receive antenna is much less because of the rain because of the snow or sometimes even fog. And you've probably been hearing a lot of hype about digital radio bringing us superior sound quality. But is digital radio susceptible to this interference? No. In fact, with digital radio, whether it's AM or FM, you will not get that type of interference. Now, something very interesting is that AM signals can travel much farther at night, meaning that you could listen to radio stations from hundreds of miles away. Jim explains the reason for this. It's a condition called skip. Basically what happens is the radio waves just go out off into the ionosphere. And the ionosphere, which is a charged layer, oh, many, many miles up, will actually reflect those signals. And that signal will then bounce back to the Earth, sometimes many miles away from where the uh, normal range of the radio station will take it. FM radio frequencies can also travel further thanks to changes in the atmosphere, though this is much less frequent. FM signals tend to improve when the weather is calm, especially when there's a stationary high pressure system over the area of transmission and where the signal's being received. In fact, there have been reports of some radio hobbyists picking up FM stations from more than 1,000 miles away. 
So here's a few things that you can try at home to see the effects of weather on your radio reception. During the next thunderstorm, tune into one of your local AM radio stations to see if you can hear the electricity generated from lightning having an effect on the signal. And when there's a high pressure system over a broad area of the country, tune along the FM dial and see if you can pick up any stations from far away. So even though you can't see those radio signals travelling through the sky, the weather certainly has an effect on radio transmissions. For NBC Weather Plus University, I'm Dave Kerwin.